Turn it up. Look, hundred years after hundred years, they done lied to us about this and that. Told us all we from Africa. I mean, fix your characters, turn it into facts. Heard your time and then it was not. No goddamn well that trick was cap. My wife and I wrote a book about it. It's a book with knowledge, evidence, and fact. And my other book got some haters shook. Cause it's helping my people take a closer look. Had they backgrounds in the background. Show my people where they post to look. Show my people where they get it from, where they hit it from. All sorts of angles. When it comes to this research, you must please first. Don't trust strangers. Find out all of your own is what I highly recommend and suggest. And if you're looking for us as a counter by me, I highly recommend you the best. What's my website at the link you see just across the screen? Don't let it miss you. I make it simple. I double down on that black and white. It's so official. For many years, Americans have allowed the history of America to be told by the opinions of strangers, along with their biased ways of storytelling concerning the original people that inhabited America prior to foreigners arriving on American shores, seeking asylum or a new beginning to their life in a totally new world to them. Eventually, the opinions of strangers from foreign countries of other continents became valuable assets somehow when it comes to validating American history from their point of view. Much of what we know about today's American history has derived from the likes of strangers of foreign descent and has since not been challenged for validity and accuracy outside of American history societies, programs, organizations, or correlating associations. All because of what we are told to believe when it comes to academic credibility and qualifications. Failing to challenge these strangers' opinions on American history led to the compulsory implementation of their viewpoints becoming educational facts, which qualifies their opinions to be credible without scrutiny. And then it is taught to millions of students in school curriculums as truthful historical accounts of American history in textbooks. But why would anyone want to lie about someone else's history in general? Simply because doing so allows for the individual or group of people to become powerful by controlling the mindsets of the said people they are teaching their opinionated version of American history to. For example, what you see on the screen now is a page pulled from a magazine called the London Gazette, dated November 20th, 1896, in which this particular page displays articles of publication from companies making business transactions, ranging from newly established partnerships to dissolving businesses. Now, I want to point out this particular article here that I found to be very interesting and essential for you to note before I go further along in this segment. The paragraph reads, Notice is hereby given that the partnership heretofore subsiding between the undersigned Wilford Hill and Edward James Prentice carrying on business as manufacturers and sellers of specialties in bicycle oils and polishes and other chemical productions of a like nature at Lower High Street, Coles Hill, in the county of Warwick, under the style or firm of the county chemical company, was dissolved as and from the 14th day of November 1896 by mutual consent. The said Wilford Hill will continue to carry on the business alone at Lower High Street, Coles Hill, as for said under the same style of the County Chemical Company, and will pay all debts owing by and receive all debts due to the late firm, dated the 17th day of November 1896. End quote. So, this publication of record shows how a business partnership between two people has been dissolved three days before the publication of this article in the London Gazette. 
and a company called Manufacturers and Sellers of Specialties in Bicycle Oils and Polishes and Other Chemical Productions, that's a long name, also known as the County Chemical Company, will now only be referred to as the County Chemical Company and Wilford Hill will be its sole owner. So prior to this business transaction of new ownership of the company came into play, the County Chemical Company was in business for many years, dating back between the early 1890s and all the way up into the 1940s. This England-based company sold items that they would call chemical goods for cycle or motor trades primarily and according to company advertisements and pictures of items sold by this company, it also sold toilet goods, metal and furniture polishes, cycle and motor lighting, lubricating oils, repair outfits, and what they call chemical burning oils. So that was their thing. But then things got a little bit interesting, to say the least. Between the late 1910s and all the way up until the 1940s with this company, keep note of the timeline here, the England-based business known as the County Chemical Company sold items that came packaged in canisters that looked like this. Now, I want you to take a close look at what this particular product is called and what's being displayed here. It is called the Nigger motorcycle repair outfit, a chemical product. And no, this is not a typo and your eyes are not deceiving you, nor is this a photoshopped image. This is real, people. This is the actual packaging of one of the company's products. Of course, some of you can find humor in this packaging nowadays, being as though we refer to each other as nigga in a benevolent sense somehow, but during the time when this product was being sold in England between the 1910s and the 1940s, this word was derogatory to our ancestors. And we can all tell that it was directed at our ancestors due to the image used of a male American Indian on the packaging. Oh yeah, they were having a great old time with our likeness and calling us whatever derogatory names they could think of back then. And somehow our people mysteriously adopted this name and still use it when referring to each other. And that's another conversation within itself. We gotta get rid of this. It's working against us by way of negative affirmation. Here's another round of their packaging being sold to consumers carrying our likeness along with the derogatory statement that's all included within their description of the product. A racial discrimination lawsuit or even a class action lawsuit does not exist against this company's practices when advertising its products. And while we're at it, there is no public apology from the company on file either. So you wouldn't need search engines to show you images of what your ancestors looked like during colonial times when many of these companies displayed our ancestors' likeness right before our very eyes. Why would these foreigners decide to use the likeness of an Indian in the first place? As we all know, many products and services are being marketed today as being owned by the Niji but they're not. And although it may seem harmless for someone to use particular images and or names for branding purposes, it also gives off a false sense of trust in these products. And by the time we are aware of the company's ulterior motives, it may be too late. Our resources continue to be put to use by particular groups of people and with our likeness being exploited for monetary gain. In this case, it's using chemicals, but in the past, it's been with food and many other things. Just look at today, where the shoe company Adidas is taking something that Kanye West put his face and name on. They got rid of him, and they also came out and stated that they will continue to sell those shoes for their monetary gain. This brings several instances to mind of when our people were exploited for someone else's monetary gain. 
because every company needs a jump start. And that's why when I initially saw these images of the motorcycle repair kits, it made me think of racing. The Indy 500 came to mind. Is Indy short for Indian or Indianapolis, which is an Indian city? Since this previous chemical company was selling oil and rubber products, I wondered, where did they get these things from? Europe was going through a Great Depression, so how would foreigners be able to immigrate to a new land, get their hands on such a valuable resource, and become rich overnight? The Indian name and image has always been characterized with strength and mobility. In fact, the term Indian has been pronounced in different instances as engine, similar to a motor. An engine is a prime mover of things, and it is synonymous with speed. Like in vehicles, it is the engine that sets things in motion, and it is also the engine that gives these companies a jump start. Just by the sound of that word alone, you can tell what was being referred to when giving a group of people the name Indian, which has been stated as engine in the past. They were referring to a group of people that had a group of people that were genuine. The etymology of the word engine comes from the old French word edgen, which means skill, wit, and cleverness, and from the Latin word ingenium, which means innate qualities, ability, and born character. But unfortunately, an engine is also a mechanical device that is being used in war. And just as foreigners have always used the images and names that refer to Indians to sell their products for years, they also used our very own people to fight their wars. Another example of a product that used the Indian name and likeness also came about in the late 1800s, but it was the Indian Motorcycle Company created by George M. Hindi who founded a bicycle production company called the Hindi Manufacturing Company. Hindi, similar to Hindi. According to the history of the Indian Motorcycle Company, the Hindi Manufacturing Company did not change its name to the Indian Motorcycle Company until 1923. It goes on to state that, quote, over its early years of existence, the company displayed extraordinary resilience as its trailblazing success in innovation and on the racetrack continued despite the advent of the Great Depression and the two world wars. In fact, not only did the brand survive these tumultuous times, but its considerable contribution to the war effort during World War I and World War II provided essential vehicles to both the American and French troops on the ground." End quote. During this same time frame, Eludair Paul Dupont began taking interest in the Indian Motorcycle Company. And I'm sure that you can recall hearing the Dupont name because it has its own chemical company as well. Eludair Paul Dupont was the son of Francis Journey Dupont, and according to the Smithsonian Institute, Francis Journey Dupont was a chemist that later served in the highly important capacity of general manager and vice president of the E.I. Dupont de Nemois Chemical Company. The Dupont family has always been in the gunpowder business, as there are records stating that they furnished the government with gunpowder during the War of 1812 and they have a number of patents, both American and British, on improvements in explosives manufacture. E. Paul DuPont took over the reins of the Indian Motorcycle Company in the early part of the American Great Depression from 1930 to 1945. The Indian Motorcycle Company ceased production after failing to sell many motorcycles in the post-war era. Later, the company was sold. 
But according to Forbes, the DuPont family is one of America's oldest and richest corporations and chemical companies. DuPont was founded as a gunpowder manufacturer in 1802 by E.I. DuPont, who fled France for the U.S. during the French Revolution. The company expanded far beyond gunpowder and is credited with inventing Ryan, Nylon, and Kevlar. This just goes to show that using the Indian name and or image has brought many companies wealth and success. And even going back to the original product that was shown at the beginning of this video, this particular company might not sell these products in this type of packaging nowadays, but you can bet that these canisters are being sold at vintage antique auctions, on websites or in stores, etc., for hundreds to even thousands of dollars right now, revealing just who our ancestors really are and what American history fails to teach you, and that is, the engine is still being used to set things in motion, both from a marketing and economic standpoint, and unfortunately, as a device of strategy when it pertains to war. But hopefully one day, we can come together as a people to change that negative persona, because we were born with the innate qualities to do so. I'm just here to make you think.